Hello there and welcome back to the shop and the build of this Queen Ant Pro version 2 Super Enhance. Now the Super Enhance part of it is what you see this big thick very robust gantry here and the third linear square rail over the back and the heavy bracketry uh, connecting over to the back of the gantry. What it's actually doing is transferring the load from the spindle. Okay, the movement of the, or should we say the forces of the tool in the, the, the spindle over to the back of, or dispersing you know, a lot of it, over to the back of the rail to disperse the twisting motion over the entire gantry assembly. So what we're going to do today is we are going to install these beautiful hybrid servo NEMA 23s on all the axes. But before we go any further, or before you go any further with your build, having got this far, go around the entire machine and check the tightness of every single screw, nut and bolt at this stage. And then check your axes for free movement. Now I don't mean catch hold of it and turn it by the actual screw, I mean catch hold of it and pull it and push it. It should be fairly even Okay, in its progress, it should be able to catch all of the gantry, about the middle of the gantry, okay. Now it's quite firm to do that, you know, you've got to put quite a bit of effort in to do that, but it's not, it's not overly difficult to do, and you shouldn't feel any grabbing or it shouldn't be getting tighter in any spot whatsoever over its entire travel. If you are getting tightening at either end or you know anywhere then you need to go back and check your linear square rails, get a vernier Check your linear square rails to see if they are absolutely parallel. If they're not, you're going to have to make them parallel and you're going to have to do what I did there. Test your axes. You should be able to move it over its entire uh, length and breadth. Uh, if you can't, it is most likely, you know, 99% of the time, it is the linear rails not quite in parallel with each other. And it's critical to be parallel. You know, if they're, but they can be parallel, but on a skew, if you're gonna, if you end up with, if you end up with your, your, you know, your linear rails, skew if, uh, your work is gonna be skew if. So you must ensure that it is parallel and relatively easy to move over its entire length. Okay, for those of you who have not seen the, install, the, the making up of this and the installation of this, uh, you may have missed on how to put the, you know, the adjustment nut on here and how to preload the bearing. And it is, uh, there is an angular contact bearing this end, okay? So we'll now install the, the nut that goes on this thread. It's a special nut, it's a square nut with a machined surface. The machined surface goes to the bearing, okay? And there is also two lock grub screws there. So I'll show you how to adjust that. Okay, so machine surface to the bearing. And uh, what you'll also need to do is get a cloth. 
Okay, and just catch hold of the screw with your hand. Put this on. Screw it all the way down. Then just hold in with your fingers the, the screw with a, with a cloth or rag. Just ease this up. Once the thread starts turning in your hands, that is the correct tension. Okay, no need to be any more than that. So then you turn around to get to your lock screws or grub screws and I'll do this up tight. Now you don't have to be just that. Just notice this flexing. No need to do any tighter than that. You'll strip the thread, the little thread inside here. There you go. One finger. That's it. Okay, the next thing to go on is one of these universal connectors okay so what you need to do is push this on okay as far as it will go okay it won't go any further why that is is because this is a I think that's 8 mil or 9 mil and of course that's smaller that's uh, six mil, I believe. Okay, these are the universal uh, couplings that are supplied with the Queen Ant, and they are the top of the range. They are really, really nice units. So we'll put that one on there, and we'll just take him up. And there again, these need to be tight, but not overly tightened they're just a little four millimeter get that in there okay so now it's time to put the beautiful NEMA 23 servo motor onto the end of the X axis so what I've done I've turned this uh, universal coupling so the slot cut in this uh, here so that the slot is up at 12 o'clock and I've turned the flat around till it's up at 12 o'clock and we'll put that in there like that um, so then you get your let me see 65 millimeter by 5 millimeter thread okay and then you have two spaces there this is a 16 millimeter spacer now I put that on first if I were you, pull that back a little, and then we can slot this one in. Just get one in there first, like this, and just start one screw, just to take a bit of the bit of the weight. Just fairly, no, just firm like that. You're not tightening it up, so you can still move it, and it can it'll hold there then. So we'll put another one in. Like so that was a 16 millimeter spacer and a 40 millimeter spacer and we can put that one in you want to be able to just move it like so beautiful now you can put the other two in
it's my preference to put the 16 millimeter spacer in closer to the motor but that's my preference oops and we'll just get the other one in over the back here just just move the motor around it a little like this just want to make sure nothing's binding so now I can tighten this up then when you've got the motor firmly tightened up we can get the right we can do the other coupling up or the coupling onto the servo motor itself turn that back a little when you have everything tightened up just make sure you can turn everything freely and you can't feel anything binding whatsoever so that's that axis and you repeat that process for the other three motors.